form of illegal um, art or tagging in any way, shape or form. And the only graffiti we do support in an art form is that that is commissioned um, and controlled and supported by the local communities. If you deface someone else's property, whether I think it's right or someone else thinks it's right or wrong, is totally irrelevant. That act in itself is illegal, and we have a very clear message that we have to send to people that participate in that sort of activity, that it is criminal, and if you are caught doing it, you will be prosecuted and you will face a criminal record. So, caught between the softening public opinion and conflicting messages from the authorities, where does this leave the growing number of artists with one foot in legitimate art and the other in illegal graffiti? Since moving to London a year ago, the artist Sick Boy has seen interest in his work continue to increase. But commercial success hasn't meant turning his back on painting on the street. I've just like the freedom of being able to um, just constantly create and, you know, you expressing yourself, it's nice to be outdoors and having your, your work in a public domain. To be honest, the normal fine art gallery route is just boring to me. I don't like that style of painting necessarily. I just like the way that I'm not bound to any rules. It's, if I want to paint something one way or another, I, I, I can do that, you know. It, it makes me feel more free as a human being. I just see it as doing art. If, I, if I'm doing a piece, I don't think I'm doing some big crime. I just think I'm doing something more natural and, and more positive. It's egotistical on one level, you know, you just want to be fair, known for your work and you like to see your stuff about. I think it's nice to be able to see your work not in a sketchbook in your bedroom or just on a canvas in your studio, but outside with people walking past. Despite the current popularity of his work, Sick Boy is keen to distance himself from the hype surrounding graffiti and street art. I mean, at the moment there is a lot of demand for my work and I could cash in and I could be releasing one or two prints a month and, you know, getting lots of money, but I don't think there's a need to cash in. It's more important for me, I mean, to look at where I'm going to be when I'm 40, 50 years old. I'm still going to want to be painting, I'm still going to want to be selling my paintings. So I don't want to just really spank it now and then regret it later. Like Sick Boy, Cyclops is one of the new wave of artists emerging in the wake of Banksy. For him, the media spotlight and favour that street art enjoys is not without its problems. I think that there's... Um... A strange, it's, it's a strange time, isn't it? Because people who've been breaking the law for a long time are getting paid. Certain artists' work is kind of lauded and protected, while other work is kind of vilified and marked out as being antisocial and um, an eyesore. I find that difficult to swallow because that's making a judgment call. You know, you, can only, you can't really do that with art. You can't make a judgment and, and kind of say that's what everyone ought to think or everyone should think. This is our environment, you know, this is our city, but most people wouldn't have a dream of altering it or changing it, you know. Well, why not? You know, it's our, it's our city, you know. You know, city planners are just f***heads, you know. They're just, like, absolute... You know, it's jobs for the boys, and they don't really care about people's mindsets or what what's going to affect people's kind of psyche when they're on their way to work, on their way back. Anything to change that, like anything, any small thing, it's just like a little bit of resistance, isn't it? You know, I'm not like a freedom fighter or anything, but it's just like a little bit of a challenge, just a little bit to say, well, I don't really, really believe in what you, what it is you're trying to sell me at all. Bigger is better, sort of thing, you know. And you change the meaning of something by amplifying its scale, even if it's a simple object. If you make it big enough, people have to think twice about what it might mean. You know? I wouldn't ever paint on someone's car. I would never paint on the side of some old cottage, you know, because I don't feel that's right, personally speaking. But then, when it comes to factories or commercial property in the centre of a city, I don't really care. I don't have any feeling of kind of wrongdoing with them doing that. Thank you.
Of course, painting illegally comes with considerable risks. Something Cyclops' collaborator, Tech 33, is only too aware of. I mean, because I'm like 33 years old now and everything's perfect for me. I've got perfect home, loads of like savings for reselling paintings. The only thing I could do to ruin things at the moment is if I get caught for doing illegal graffiti and I get a fine. But still, to me, it's worth it. It like drives me on because when I'm working hard, I like look forward to my like the days off, like when all the work's done as well. And I like want to be out there with like Cyclops and Sweet too. Street bombing, like or street tagging, it's like a, a very special thing to me. It's very dear to me. I could be like caught at any day, and it could cause me a lot of trouble. But then I love getting up. It's just a really good feeling. It's one of my, my favourite things to do. So. Yeah, there's no stopping me. <laughs> For Paris, it's precisely the risks of getting caught that eventually made him give up doing illegal painting. I really turned my back on legal graffiti just because of the, the risks involved with that and that whole culture even going to court even getting arrested is so demeaning and so soul destroying these days it ain't worth it i can get a lot more done going through the right channels to create the work that i really want to do getting permission from property owners often means he can still paint what he wants but concentrate on doing large-scale walls that would be difficult to do illegally It's good to sort of step out of the, you know, step out and take the bows, get the acclaim for, you know, me the person and not have to hide behind a pseudonym. You know, Paris, Graham Paris, Graham Jews, it's all, you know, it's all the same package. Despite being able to take personal acclaim for his work, it's hard not to make comparisons with pieces done outside the law. Something high profile in a really good spot that's well done, that's really well executed. You, you can't beat that, yeah. And I do get jealous because, you know, running those sort of risks is not what I'm about anymore. I miss those times. Paris is not alone in giving up the illegal side of graffiti, but amongst those who don't, it's the most persistent and prolific that the police target. Graffiti itself is not a crime putting graffiti on someone's property without that person's permission is a crime. We're not here to stop people from doing it, what they enjoy doing. We are here to stop people from damaging other people's property. The main type of graffiti that we investigate is, is the tagging, uh, because that is where the most damage is caused. But it doesn't mean to say that you can go and do a big colourful mural, and just because it's not a tag, it's all right to do it on someone's property. It all comes down to permission, and you know, without the permission, it is a criminal offence. So we don't discriminate between tags and murals. At the end of the day, if you've put those things up on somebody's property and they don't want it there, then you're more than likely going to get arrested for it. We research graffiti tags. Um, we're out on the street a lot, um, seeing what's up, what's fresh. And we approach it the same way that we would approach any other prolific crime. We just go at it hard until we get the offender punished for the amount of damage that they've done. As a unit, we've been um, very successful. Pretty much everyone we've investigated has been um, had some form of punishment. I think the most um, prolific offender we've dealt with, we cleared 365 crimes, and that was 365 separate counts of criminal damage. I mean, that for us was quite a good and significant case, um, and I think it sent out a message of, as long as they're out there doing it, we're going to be out there catching them. The police are not alone in taking issue with tagging. For the public, it's where most people's sympathy for graffiti ends. And here we are. This is a fine example of uh, what we've had to put up with uh, in the local area. A guy was caught some three years ago, arrested by the police, a clean-up campaign went on. Uh, he was involved in actually cleaning up. That went well um, some six months afterwards, come back again, and here we are today looking at what we're looking at.
it is damaging. It's not high-level crime, but it is damaging. And uh, you know, we 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 want to live in a place that 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 people feel comfortable in. The, the, the tagging of BT's whole wall, I really don't like it. Um, it just makes the place look really scruffy and untidy. The Banksy graffiti, it's quite nice. It, I think that does add to an area. Um, you have to obviously keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't go absolutely everywhere as this stuff has. It's, it's just horrible. But for the people who defend graffiti, tagging isn't an optional extra that the public can simply say no to. It's an age-old question and so many people say, oh, I love what you're painting on this wall, but I hate all that scribble. You can't just have graffiti in galleries and on canvases and on prints and in coffee table books. 